Hello, my name is Greg Smith from the SMA Solar Academy, and today I'm going to show you how to wire the secure power supply to the Sunny Boy TLUS series of inverters. The secure power supply is the easiest thing you will ever add to a Sunny Boy TLUS existing or new installation as it offers a very unique upsell opportunity for energy security for the home owner. No other inverter manufacturer can offer that. The hardware required for a secure power supply installation can be found at any hardware store or electrical supply outlet. Basically, you just need an electrical box, a receptacle, a switch, conduit and five different conductors whose length will be determined by the distance from the secure power supply board to the electrical box. Using the 3% voltage drop rule suggested by the National Electric Code, that would give a number 18 wire about 75 feet from the secure power supply board to the electrical box. You can go more or you can go less, but that's a good rule of thumb. A GFCI receptacle is not required for use with the Sunny Boy TLUS and the secure power supply because the inverter has an overload capability. However, if you install the electrical box outside, then building code may require a GFI outlet or a protective cover for the electrical box. Wiring the electrical box is very easy. You're going to use standard wiring practices for the receptacle and for the switch. Now, once you get these two components wired, you will run those conductors up into the bottom of the TLUS inverter, and then you'll go behind the LCD display to terminate those conductors. So let's show you where those go. So once you run the conductors up into the bottom of the inverter, then you can start landing them on the terminals over here where the secure power supply board is. Now I've got five different conductors here and the colors for the switch wiring really don't matter but I used red. Now for the receptacle I used the common black for line, white for neutral and then I've got a green wire for the equipment ground that goes back down to the receptacle. The next part will require a very small screwdriver. Although we don't have screws to actually turn for the SPS board, we're using spring terminals. So you basically just need the screwdriver to push into the slot, open the spring, and then insert the conductor. Then once they're in, pull the screwdriver out and it will clamp down on that conductor. Again, you'll have two conductors for the switch and then a black, white, and green conductor for the receptacle. So I'm going to start with the switch wiring and then I'm going to work my way down the SPS board with the receptacle wiring. So I'm going to start by inserting the screwdriver into the slot, pushing it in, inserting the conductor, and we're going to repeat that for the remaining four conductors. All right, and that's it. I've installed all five of my conductors. Now, it's worth noting that you really need to install the WebConnect module before you install the SPS wiring. Otherwise, it's just a really, really tight fit. Now, once you are complete with this part of the installation, the only thing left to do is to drop the cover down like this, screw it in, and then test the SPS function. Now that's another simple process. We basically want to recreate a grid failure. So what you're going to do is turn the AC breaker off to the inverter. The inverter will think the grid is down. Then all you have to do is turn the switch on and observe the behavior of the inverter and then plug something in to the receptacle to verify operation. And that's all it takes to give a homeowner a lifetime of energy security. If you'd like to know more about this product, just go to our website at sma-america.com. My name is Greg Smith. Thank you for watching.